Hey guys, it's Dean. Welcome to the Better Man Podcast. Today I am joined by an old friend of mine, Sean Vig. Sean. Hello, Dean. Great to be here on your brand new podcast. Yeah, thanks very much. Um, so Sean is known as YouTube's most watched Pilates and fitness guy. Pilates, wait, Pilates and yoga guy, right? What's, what's uh, the quote? They usually say Pilates and yoga guy. Yeah, which of course yeah. I... A guy who teaches both disciplines. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, of course, there's there's no conflict there because I can be YouTube's most watched yoga guy, but you're the Pilates and yoga guy. So, so yes, so we Pilates can... is always the uh, curveball in there. Yeah. But anyways, so Sean and I have uh, so I like to start these off just saying, how do I know the guest? So Sean and I, I think, first connected back in I want to say it was like 2014 or 2015. Uh, and we made a we made a video together, um, and in that video, I this was back when I just yelled at the camera and I didn't have good sound at all. So I'm just I'm yelling at a camera, and I found this really weird open lot that had a bunch of garbage in it. But I was like, eh, it looks nice here, and there's you can hear the crackles, which is this lovely central. Texas bird that just chirps very annoyingly and constantly and loudly. So I'm, I'm screaming at the camera and these birds are, you know, crackling in the background and there's broken glass on the ground. And anyways, that was one of uh, Sean and I's first videos together. So there's your, you were under an overpass under yes. an overpass, I believe. Yes. And, and there were, yeah, there was glass. And mm -hmm. I appreciate that because I always film outside and I thought, well, Dean's really taking it up a notch. He's going to a really dangerous location with broken glass and, and cars going right by you. So I appreciated that. Yeah. Yeah. That's a uh, ex <laughs> extreme yoga for you. Um, but anyway, so that's how Sean and I first met. And I just got the, you know, I just kind of got the sense from you that you were just overall a very happy kind of carefree person would you would you say that's would you say that's true for the most part or have you have you always been like that or you know i'd love for you to talk about that a little bit i'm a pretty happy guy when i'm doing things i really enjoy doing like filming so whenever somebody sees me in a video usually i'm very very excited because it's something i really enjoy doing um, i have my moments like anybody off camera or sometimes when things don't go right when i'm filming uh, there could be bloopers that I would never broadcast because um, I might say things that it would be inappropriate <laughs> for the, my for my channel. But uh, I mean, it's it, that's what's great about filming and and doing what I do or post because whenever I do that, um, I really enjoy it. So that's what you get to see. Mm -hmm. And you are you also perform in other areas. So you were you were an opera singer. Or what was what was your background? Or am uh, I? I did professional theater yes for a long time. Okay. Um, in my twenties and about half of my thirties, I'm I'm almost forty eight now, so I'm pushing fifties. But I I did professional theater for for quite a few years, a lot of uh, music theater, and I trained as an opera singer when I was in college, and even professionally, I did some opera. But when I was in college, that's what I started with, because I had kind of a voice for that. So my voice teacher put me on a lot more of an opera, opera menu. I mm. sang a lot of the old Italian art songs, and I, I really like opera, especially big opera. So I, I would always bring him certain arias that were probably, they were for much older singers, but mm -hmm. I really enjoyed doing that. I come from a big theater background, mm -hmm. and I did it as a child. I did it in high school, and then I majored in it also in college so uh, sometimes i'll pop into some singing in a video if the spirit uh, gets to me <laughs> yeah that's that's something about your videos that you'll notice you just you just very uh you'll go off you'll go off in your own little world sometimes <laughs> you'll, you'll point out things and have a discussion uh about them for you know uh which which i like doing because my idea is that I'm distracting someone while they're doing a pose for, look, it seems shorter while I'm talking about something else. So it's, you know, it's, it's Mr. miyagi somebody into holding a pose for, you know, a longer time. Um, so my, my question from there is how did you, 
how did you transition from, you know, a theater performer to being a YouTube performer, so to speak, or into YouTube. fitness? Yeah. Well, you know, theater is very strenuous. It's very physical, usually doing about eight to nine shows a week. And a lot of times you're rehearsing another show while you're performing a show in the evening. So you would get up early and go down to the theater. You'd be rehearsing all day. And then you'd have a break for dinner. Then you would go perform the current show that you're doing, especially in summer theater, where you'll do four shows and rep sometimes, four or five. Mm. So, you know, I've always been a very physical person. I started working out when I was in high school. Uh, doing weights, mm -hmm. but it was in theater that I discovered more of Pilates, core-centered fitness, and also yoga, mm. and power yoga, and flow yoga, and flexibility and mobility training, because once I hit, I think it was around 24 years old, my body wasn't happy with the constant weight training all the time, with nothing else to balance it, mm. and when I started taking dance classes, I was never much of a dancer. I was more of a park and bark guy. I would stand and sing. I would stand and act. And I was very heavy on my feet. I had an ex-girlfriend that would always make fun of me for that. But that drove me into taking dance classes. And it was in those dance classes that I started learning more about uh, the teacher would introduce us to certain yoga flows before we would get moving or warm-up exercises. Sometimes we would actually do some classic Pilates work as well because joseph pilates the founder of pilates he had a huge dance population that would come to his classes so it was at the broadway dance center in new york where i started learning more about body weight disciplines calisthenics and how they carried over into enhancing movement mm. and uh you know i was still i was still doing theater when i got my ace personal training certification down. I was living in Hollywood, Florida, and I was doing theater and I was studying for the certification at the same time. And I went down to Miami and I took the test and I started doing personal training at the time. I'd never really taken any full yoga or Pilates classes at that point, but I started blending it in. I was doing theater. I was personal training. They seemed to work very well together, the two disciplines. And, and that's, that's really where it started back in the early 2000s down in Hollywood, Florida, when I started combining the two. Got it. And then what what made you start the, the YouTube chip? Well, I, I started teaching first. I taught spin class and I got fired after a few classes. But I'm writing, I'm working on a, a, a memoir right now on being okay. a freestyle fitness instructor. And I'm working on that chapter, how I got fired. <laughs> so maybe I'll have to wait for the book on that. But I, I taught a few and it, I, I got fired and it stung and I hated it. And then I started taking Pilates and yoga full classes. And I got certified mm. and I started teaching. And then my best friend, Stefan, who I still talk to just about every day, and we're planning some new things over the summer for my brand. But he uh, suggested, he was, why don't you get a flip camera and a MacBook Pro? This is back in 2009. Okay. Which is now like ancient history as far as technology goes. Right. But this little flip camera with a big red button, they don't even exist anymore. I think they were bought out uh, by some, another company and they just went extinct. So I went to Best Buy, bought that, and bought a MacBook Pro. And I have a long history of doing home videos as a child. I had a camcorder and I filmed all the time by myself or with my friends or at events or school events, things like that. And I just took to it. I went out to the amphitheater here in town and I set the camera up on the tripod and just started filming. And I never had an issue with that. I, I learned a lot along the way, but it was a very natural transition for me. And you just start blasting them. You start mm. blasting them up onto YouTube into podcasts. 2009, the landscape was very different. Mm -hmm. A lot of you know software and websites have come and gone, but that's, that's where I started. And it was a very good fit for me. Yeah. So something I was just thinking about is I have a, I have a friend who, um, or my, uh, good friend's wife and she's a dancer and something that I realized when I was attending one of her shows is dancers have to be very in touch with themselves in touch with their, their feelings, their emotions in order to express their bodies in order to 
you know, they, they have to kind of work through emotions. They have to work through things in order to be able to express themselves to the extent that they do when they're performing. So I'm, I'm just curious, do you notice that, what, what do you know, Miss, that performing in that theater has done for you in terms of your own kind of emotional and mental well-being? Does that, does that question kind of make sense? Is that, does that That's a great something? question. Uh, the theater taught me so many invaluable lessons because when you're traveling around doing theater, you're, you're constantly working with people. You're always interacting with people on a, a very creative level. Uh, you're always in new environments you're using your body to its full extent, especially if you're doing music theater, something that requires you to move, to speak, to enunciate, to breathe, to pace yourself, to sing, and not only to do it once, but to do it many, 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 many times. Yoga, Pilates, the disciplines that we work on, Dean, have staying power. I mean, there's something you could do as a baby. You can do it at 99 years old, 100 years old. Mm. Theater, you know, it's... um. Yeah, it, it just, it taught me so much. I, funny, I'm working on this also in the book, writing about the lessons learned in theater and how they translated over to fitness. When I was in theater, I started training other actors because I would see people that would blow themselves out after a few performances. They didn't mm. know how to breathe properly. They didn't move properly. They didn't hold their bodies very well on stage. You could be singing in, you don't know what kind of scene or position you're going to be singing a song in, to a crowd of 400 or 1600 or 2000. So, you know, you, you worry about things like alignment, about balance in your body, about good breath control mm. and being able to get on that stage night after night and the occasional matinees and be as close to a hundred percent as you can be. It really, for me, uh, pushed me to a point of excellence mm. where I wanted to give, you know, if you did four or 500 performances of one show, I wanted every performance to be the best I could. And, and that means taking care of your instrument, taking care of your body, eating mm -hmm. right, um, exercising. I mean, I went out a lot too. I, you know, theater years were pretty wild, but I always retained, uh, you know, whatever show I was doing, I knew what I could do and I knew what I couldn't do to get up on that stage and do a very good production. And that really carries over into fitness. I mean, I always want to be aligned. I want to move well. I want to roll out mm -hmm. of bed feeling well. I want that to show you know, to the people that are watching me in a video or a class or whatnot that I practice what I preach. So they're, they're very similar, the mm -hmm. two, um, in movement and breath and presence and, and physical and mental excellence, because you talked about the emotional quality too. Mm -hmm. Even in theater, you have to be careful because I've seen people, and I would do it too, get so emotional, but that's not um, practical over time in a show. You can't kill yourself every time on stage. So you, you learn a, a way to not fake it, but not, not beat yourself up all the time. Because you know, in a number of hours, you're going to have to get up there and do it again. Mm. So in fitness too, in fitness also, I don't want to teach things that beat the hell out of me all the time that I can't get up the next morning and do it again. So I want something that you can do every single day and keep getting better and better. Yeah. That so might've been a long answer. <laughs> no, that was, that was great. So it's very yeah. much on figuring out how to do things sustainably and practice. It's, yeah. Very practical. <clears throat> and I like this idea of this balance between performing and being vulnerable there because you have to be vulnerable in order to perform but also not giving it all away so you're kind of finding this this balance uh -huh. of um how do i convey what i need to do but also not like you know derobe yeah. myself completely in the process yeah david mammoth one of the great playwrights i've read some books that he's written and he talked about actors that overindulge and he said, look, your main focus, and I think this for fitness too, your main focus is to the audience. Your job is to convey what the author of the show or the musical wants to convey to the audience. It's all about the audience. So when I, when I teach and when I feel anything, write books, it's all about who I'm teaching to. You know, it's not so much about me, but it's about them getting the best experience possible. As you said earlier, you know, you put somebody in a kind of a challenging pose and you want to talk them through it in a lighthearted way. You know, you don't want mm -hmm. them to uh, 
to uh, get a bad connotation of everything. You want to keep it light and exciting and inspiring. So they keep coming back for more, whether it's theater or whether it's our fitness classes. Yeah, no, that's 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 true. That makes a lot of sense to me. So I'm I'm just I'm kind of I'm just I'm still thinking about this um, this idea of giving part of your stuff, not giving all of it. So I'm just curious, do you learn to, do you learn to fake emotions in a way? Is it something that kind of, does it carry over into real life? I guess, I guess I'm coming into this with the assumption that in order to perform, you have to be open. You have to be, you know, emotional. You have to be able to access that. And now I'm kind of thinking, well, you're only able to put out part of that or you'll burn out. Does that teach you to, to also perform, so to speak, in real life? Perform in real life in which way? Perform in the sense that do you, you know, do you kind of restrict yourself? Do you, do you kind of, do you take what you do on stage and do you sometimes do that in real life too, just because you're, you're used to performing that way on stage? Is that? Yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of times when the camera comes on to do a video, I, I am performing in a way, you know, I want, mm -hmm. I'm presenting, I'm performing. I want to create something that is a standalone uh, and, you know, I, I film thousands and thousands of videos, so I still want everything that I film to stand on its own, to to last, to have the stuff mm -hmm. of revelation in it that, that will keep going long after I'm gone. Yeah. I want that to keep going. You know, you mentioned what you had said earlier in the question. The thing is in theater, I, I always think of West Side Story. Do you know West Side Story? I'm Very familiar. well, the show. I'm I know the movie just it. came out. Yeah, and I did a lot of productions of that. And it's a very emotional show. It really mm -hmm. is. It's Romeo and Juliet set the music in 1950s Hell's Kitchen with the Jets and the Sharks going at it. Of course, they dance a lot, so that's not as intimidating. But um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a very emotional show when you tie in the movement and the, the dialogue and, of course, the music. The Leonard Bernstein music is so powerful. Mm. And I remember the first time I did the show during rehearsals, we were all, like, wiped out at the end. We're all crying at the end because, you know, uh, Tony gets shot in the back and it's just terrible. Like all the leads die. Mm -hmm. and, but then, you know, you realize a lesson that you also get a little callous to it. It's like a really sad song. You listen to it a few times, you get really emotional. But then there's that one time you listen to it, you don't quite feel it as much. You get mm -hmm. callous to it. You get used to it. So, you know, it's good to go through that. You go through the emotions of a show and then you think, okay. I've gone through that. It's still very emotional, but I have to, you know, I can't, I can't get all worked up every time because then I'll get frustrated when I want to get worked up and it's just not there anymore. Yeah. So you learn to do a steady. And, you know, I, I know people who have done shows on Broadway. They've done shows for like 2000 performances. So that's something. Mm -hmm. um, I guess everyone has their own story for it, but I'm always fascinated by it. I'm glad you asked that question, how people, maintain that kind of consistency because as i said it's all about the audience mm. it's always about the audience it's always about who's watching you want to give them the best experience possible um, in the end but uh yeah i mean every time you know re i hit record on the on the camera i like i want to i want to give something really meaningful here and if i yeah. didn't i wouldn't be doing this the way my mind operates it gets me in trouble a lot finding balance because I get very caught up in things. I get very excited about things and I have to learn to balance that more. But I, I really like filming, I think, because mm -hmm. I'm an actor at heart and I want to perform. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, uh, so I, my, actually, my sister is, is very into theater and she had a daughter, I think, about four years ago now, and she turned four recently. I should know that. Yes, she turned four recently. In case she listens uh -huh. to this and says, you don't know how old your niece is, and say, okay, she's yeah, definitely... Yeah, Uncle Dean. You have she's... to know that. Yes. She <laughs> she wanted to call me Dunkle, to which I promptly uh, shot down. Um, I think that means my... dark in German. Dunkel. Dunkel. Yes, I've had a few uh -huh. Dunkels. And, uh, <laughs> I've had a few Dunkels. It was a fun time. Um but so my sister um, was in in theater and she did shows up until the time that she had her daughter, um, you know, so she was used to the whole theater lifestyle, you know, going to work during the day. But then from five o'clock until, you know, 10 o'clock rehearsing shows or performing and doing it all again the next day. Um, 
the irony there is I did theater in high school for one year and I was like, I don't want to do this. Um, Mm -hmm. even though I did, I did choir, I did, I was in three different choirs or sorry, two different. No, I wasn't three different choirs. I did Mm -hmm. the basic mixed acapella group, uh, the group, which is like, you know, 60 or 70 people. And then I did a, uh, performance, like a show choir, like glee, like, um, Mm -hmm. group. It wasn't as cool as glee. Um, but it was, uh, there were still some fun pieces that we did. And then I was also in, you know, a men's ensemble, like the do, wop, do, wop, wop. Mm-hmm. So that kind of thing. Um, and, and then I wanted to go into government and I wanted to do, and I wanted to work in, um, you know, in intelligence and, and, uh, and I was in army ROTC for a year and then eventually uh, that didn't work out. And then I ended up in theater, <laughs> you know, in a way with, with my YouTube channel and with, um, you know, with performing there. It was kind of like a, uh, a reluctant, not reluctant in the sense, but it took me a while to think of myself as a performer. You know, the first couple of years I was kind of like on camera, but I was, I felt kind of shy or silly about it. I was like, hey, I'm Dean and I'm here doing a yoga workout because it was still, you know, I think I was still getting over this idea that yoga wasn't, you know, super masculine. And I wanted to come across as like a really, you know, strong masculine guy. And, um, you know, here I am wearing shorts in a field doing yoga. Um, and why did I bring all that up? I'm bringing that up because I kind of, I, I, I get the, I, I, I can understand the toil of the theater performer. It seems like it's a very uh demanding job physically and it's cool that you were able to go through that experience and then learn how to take care of your body with you know with physical fitness so my other my other i don't know if that led into a question but my other question that i did have from here um you've you've just always enjoyed being on film and recording do you remember you know what was so what is so enjoyable about, about it for you? There was there something in particular when you were, you know, you said you do it, you did it a lot when you were a kid. So I'm just wondering, was there something that was, you know, that made it super enjoyable? Was there something else that you, you know, got away from when you were able to do that? Or what was, you know, what really drove that, um, the joy of, of performing? Yeah. You know, the thing is, is uh, the way I'm on camera is pretty much exactly how I am in real life, just a little more elevated. Mm. Like theater is elevated life. Andrew Lloyd Webber, the famous composer, said, you know, you can say I love you in real life, but you can say I love you 50 times in a song and it's perfectly normal. So uh, when you when I was a kid and you know, I get the camcorder, my dad bought one and I just learned how to use it and went nuts with it. But we would have sleepovers a lot. Friends of mine would stay over. And if you stayed over at my house, we would do home videos. And we would always do interview shows, which would always de-evolve in us shooting each other with cap guns and hitting each other and stuff because we're guys. And we'd be running around, jumping off. The, we had a really steep uh, decline in the yard. We would jump off that. This is in the country in Wisconsin, in mm. Wisconsin. Wisconsin, and yes. The home videos were so much fun. I even put up, my dad helped me put up lights and and put a little backdrop um, down. And it was very fluid. We'd say, okay, let's just go with this. And we'd do an interview show. We'd always interview and have different guests. And then we went through a phase where we found a bunch of M80 firecrackers and we'd blow things up in our driveway. And we'd tie it into a story like, here's the Hulk. And then I had this little Hulk figure and we blew him up. And we'd light the fuse and run like 100 yards away so you'd hear that on the camera. All of a sudden our voice is like, oh, and then boom. And sometimes the fuses wouldn't work and, and we walk over, then they'd explode or sometimes they never would, but it's the eighties. It didn't matter. We could do whatever we wanted. Right. You know, I don't have any fingers, but, um, <laughs> which makes my down dogs difficult. No, I do have fingers, but, uh, I love right. filming. You know, and I film by myself a lot. I have videos of me just tooling around in my room, just I'm filming. And then you hear my mm. dad knock on the door. I'm like, okay, Sean, start wrapping up. We have to go somewhere. We have to, you know, leave to go somewhere. But yeah, Someone, my buddies would, they one or two or they'd stay overnight and, and I would, they would flourish on the camera. 
because there weren't many cameras around back then. Uh-huh. And you put them on camera, and they were really fun, a lot of them. I, I have these VHS tapes, and it'll be 30 years next month that I graduated high school. I don't know if we're doing a reunion, but mm-hmm. it'd be something to bring out you know, 30 years later. Um, yeah, you know the novelty of the camera. <laughs> that is something that that people who were born you know, after the year 1999 will not be able to appreciate because you know, everyone has access to a camera. Now. Yeah, like uh-huh. before, I remember the, I mean, I was young enough to remember the age of when a camera was like, you're on camera, like, oh my God, I'm on camera. And now uh-huh, it's and like everyone performs secret, and everyone acts different. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, so, so for you, it was very much this, <laughs> this play. This was your ability, like this was a, uh, this is a, this was time for you to play. It was unrestricted. It's, it's an extension flow. of playing, and and thank God I did it because there's these time capsules now that I have. I'm so happy I have all these. I'm so happy I have all these videos now. Of course, I mean I have my iPhone. I film my son all the time, my family. But I'm so happy I have videos of me doing Pilates from 2009 because now that's ancient history. Everything just turns into shadows. Mm-hmm. So, it, I, yeah, exactly. I love to play and best things in life you don't even think about it. you just do it like when i hit record to do a workout video i just go i don't overthink it it's it's mm-hmm. playtime it's therapy you don't know it at the time of the kid but it's very therapeutic it's creative yeah. and inspiring a lot of times you're outside on a summer day in wisconsin wearing clothes that don't match because i didn't even care back then i had my skateboarding ramps in the driveway because i was a thrasher for a while you know we're just I can't even explain it. it I, I have no words for it. It's, it's, it's play, as you said. It's total yeah. play time. And I think fitness is play, too. I, have, I love cinema. I love film. I love film history, cinematography. Mm-hmm. I grew up with the original Star Wars films. And I even had an 8 millimeter camera be, from my family before I had the camcorder. And I would do stop animation with those because I was always so intrigued by the art of film production. Mm. So it... You know, somebody once said, walk by a magazine rack, and whichever magazines you choose, those are fields you should really consider going into because these are the things you're very interested in. And I always liked anything with entertainment or theater or film, and I like fitness stuff too. Mm-hmm. So if you can combine the two, um, and I do, I like to talk about movies in my videos because movies to me yeah. are such great expressions of art and creativity. And I find movies to be very inspiring. Like before I go film sometime, I'll put on a skateboard movie or I'll put on the movie 300, something like that to get me charged up. Then I'll go out and film more so than music sometimes because I like the visual of it, too. And movies are are put together in such a beautiful way. They're very fluid, Mm -hmm. you know, enhanced life, enhanced life. Yeah. I mean, so 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 first off, um, the. I've learned about so many random older movies that I would never know about just based on following <laughs> following you. And you, you put up like an old movie and you're like, what movie is this? I'm like, I have no idea. This is this and is the, I think everyone should know this movie. Yeah. Those are those are the kind of movies that you randomly see on Samsung Galaxy TV. You're like, what is this thing? Where uh-huh. do they even find this? Um and then I, I do want to come back to um I do wanna eventually talk about your how do you uh, how do you work on your your interest outside of fitness and what are those? But first, I want to go back to this quote that you had at the beginning of your answer here, which is theater's elevated life. Um, uh-huh. And I want to know what can people who do not do theater, what could they learn from people who who came up in theater, who practice theater? What can what can they learn from being in that environment and performing? Um. Well, if I if I was teaching a class on that, I, I would talk about, uh, well, I love enunciation. I love good breath support. I like, mm. oh, when you can't understand somebody, I've taken fitness classes. Well, I don't know what they're saying. Or they're, they're turn, <laughs> they turn up, I call it upstage. You know, they don't look downstage. They turn upstage. You know, in theater, you're always, your body is always to the audience. You, you mm. can't, I mean, you can turn once in a while, but you have to be mic. But you're always projecting out this way. So mm-hmm. you're, it's very vulnerable. You're using everything that everything you have to project to the audience. So that is a big one. Breath mm-hmm. support and enunciation, speaking, you know, from the diaphragm is very mm-hmm. good. 
Wait, really, really, really mm -hmm. quick interjection here. Do you notice that you have imbalances in your body because you tend to look to one side when you're absolutely? So for me, I have like this weird shoulder imbalance. My down dog looks all different from my from my from my left and my right shoulder because I'm looking turned. to my left and uh -huh. my shoulders like my right shoulder is all different. So, anyway, I, I always feel my right. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I always feel on my right yeah. side. We got to switch. I switch, but we got to like, switch oh, to keep it balanced. We're gonna like mess gotta, ourselves this up. This is my. Like, you know what? I even put my coffee over here because I'm like, no, I want this side to show. Uh, no one wants to see this side. They'll run away <laughs> screaming. But look at this. You know, look at that profile. All right. But bright awareness, those old G.I. Joe ads, you know, the more you know, that's something from the 80s also. But it always talked about the more you know, the better you can do in life. Just being mm -hmm. aware. Being aware of imbalances. Uh, how old is your son now, Dean? He's about 20 months. He's just over 20 months. 20 months. months. I, I have a hard time doing months, so I always do. <laughs> uh, I always talk. So he's um, oh, wait, what he's... a year and eight months. Yeah. Okay. So you're holding him. Are you aware of holding him on both sides? Uh, well, yeah. Holding... One arm gets tired. He's heavy now. He's like twenty five uh -huh. pounds. So you know, pretty quickly, my arm gets tired, and I have to shift. You shift. I my son got used to me because I favor this side. So now I, I do it all. I switch them to the other side. He's like, no, daddy, other side. I'm like, no, I have to balance it out. So then sometimes if he really pushes the issue, I'm like, okay. Then I make a mental note. Later on, I'll grab a dumbbell or something. I'll just hold it like this for a little bit. Because mm. those imbalances, you know, over time, they create massive problems. Yeah. So it, I, this is weird. I like to drink out of the faucet. My God bless my dad. He always did that. And I'm so aware. I'm like, wait a minute. I need to switch sides when I do this. So now oh, I'm, yeah. switching, I'm going back and forth. My son does it now, too. I hold him up to wash his hands. He goes, Daddy, I want to, you know, then he puts his mouth under the faucet and drinks. And I think, okay, we got to turn him to the other side. But these are the imbalances yeah. that over time become doctor visits and chiropractic uh -huh. visits, things like that. I'm like, oh, man, I didn't realize that one time is fine, but 2,000 times. And it, it becomes a big problem. So I don't know where we got off on that, but but that is very true. You know, the instructor also has to give a balanced class and a balanced video if you plan to do it a lot. Hmm. But, it, you know, we do have our, yeah, the, the yeah. right side all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that, that was me. To. That was me interrupting you and asking you if you also had those imbalances. But you were, it's you your were talking podcast. about you can, a, you can say whatever you want. Oh, no, I just want to I just want to get you back on to the answer that you were having. So I had asked you, what can we learn from people who do theater? And you were going to give the second part of that response when I, I was interjected. I'm sorry. Why well, I, I alluded to it before. That's a good word. Alluded. Um, Addie, come here. Addie, come here. Did you want to see Addie? She's. Come here. Oh, she Addie. never. She ignores me all the time. Addie's famous. She gets recognized more than I do. So that when we go out, <laughs> she's one over there. Uh, she never listens to me, except when I hit record, she'll come over and jump on me. Mm, that's, she knows. That's the thing. She's living an elevated life when I hit record. <laughs> I'm gonna go get him. Um. Uh. Wait. What are we talking? Oh, theater. Um. Well, the ability to adapt in theater mm. is very good. You take a lot of different roles. Every role has different requirements, mm -hmm. especially if you're doing a music theater, which, a combina which is a combination of singing and movement or dance and acting. And, and shoot, I've worked at summer theaters where you also go into the shops also. You're painting sets, you're building flats, you're building things. You're, you know, so that's a whole other thing. When I did summer oh, wow. theater up in Montana, at the Big Fork Summer Playhouse, you're doing a bit of everything. So you're you're learning so much about I don't know how your how your body moves, how your how your mind reacts, how you interact with other people on stage, spatial awareness. Sometimes you have a big group of people. West Side Story again, you know the Jets. There's usually a bunch of them and the Sharks, and you're all jumping around on stage together, doing stage combat, doing mm. kicks, doing dancing. So you're you're learning because I I've gotten nailed a few times in the show uh, in shows before. And it's not fun when your spatial awareness was off or your, mm -hmm. you know, a buddy, of your spatial awareness was off. So, Oh man, you know, I've been writing about this in my book because some of these things, you just do it out of instinct. You never really intellectualize them. You just do them. Mm. And that's very powerful. But then when someone comes along and asks you, it's very exciting because you learn in real time why you're really doing something, something you always did naturally. 
Um, I don't do calculus naturally, but I can do, you know, uh, workouts. I can do theater, things like that come to me very naturally. Mm. So, so I'm kind of, yes. oh, go ahead. So I'm kind of curious what comes easier to you. I mean, you kind of answered that, but I'm wondering if you can specify what comes easier to you because of your theater background compared to, you know, other people that they would find difficulty with. Uh, well, teaching, teaching fitness classes, definitely. Next week, I'm traveling to Omaha, Nebraska. I'm teaching a class, a yoga class for the NSCA conference there. Cool. And I've done classes for the last four years. Uh, I went to Iowa. The last couple of years, they were Zoom conferences. But um, I really enjoyed that, you know, going into like a space with hundreds of people and just teaching, you mm -hmm. know, put the mat down and let's go. Because, you know, it's so accessible. You don't need anything. You just put a yeah. mat down and you can, let's start in child's pose. Let's do some lunges. Let's practice this. Let's practice that. Mm -hmm. And I'm very comfortable with reading the room and, you know, moving appropriately appropriately mm. with that. I have thousands of these little note cards. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're somewhere. But with, with notes on them. Yes, those. Whether they're, <laughs> you know, I write down words or, you know, uh, little mantras or I write down sequences. And I, I do. I always write things down, but a lot of times I just go off, as you said. Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, I like this flow we're in right here. Let's keep it going. Yeah. I may have not expected to spend so much time on this, but they really seem to need this right now. Mm -hmm. And that's the really fun part is those things that really happen in the moment that differentiates the classes, whether it's a live class or a video. In a video, I film outside all the time. So there's, of course, environmental factors that can pop up. The obvious ones, like, like weather things or wind, or I live in Florida now, so there's gators around me. There's, <laughs> there's all sorts of wildlife. I was in Colorado. Have you, have sometimes... you, have you had a gator run in while you're filming? Um, they're around me a lot. I haven't had one come out of the water since I lived here back in like 2011. Mm -hmm. uh, but I've had to relocate a few times. I'm like, yeah, I just don't trust that guy. You just go back <laughs> and forth. Um, we live right, there's a pond right across the street, like a smaller lake, and there's a gator in there, but he's kind of small. But still, you know, he's getting a little friendly, uh, it looks mm. like. All of a sudden, he's on our shore. I'm like, no, no, you got to go over there and get friendly <laughs> with people. But people are so stupid. They walk up to them and take photos. I'm like, get the hell away from them. Leave them alone. Because that's how they get friendly. And then they have to remove them because they get too friendly with people. But, uh, um, you know, there's a, a place I film out here. It's called Artisan Park. And it's a big lake. And sometimes there's a crap load of gators in there swimming around. Sometimes there's none. But that's the first thing I do is I just look everywhere. And sometimes you won't even see it. There'll be two eyes just right on the shoreline watching me. And I'm like, okay. That's I creepy. never bring my dog near there, um, but then I'll relocate far away, mm. you know, but a couple of weeks ago I was filming and this, this woman was, I think, babysitting a couple of kids. She showed up and she was just screaming at one of the boys. I'm like, I'm filming right here. You know, I have the camera. I don't have a crew or anything. It's me and my imaginary friend, but I have the mat right. and my tripod and the camera. And she's, yeah, the boy ran right by me and ran around the lake. I'm like, he can't go over there. There's gators over there. So I had to stop everything and she's just screaming at him and then it's on video, some of it. And then he, he came back and he's like, there's a gator over there. I'm like, yeah, no kidding. Um, I was about ready to run over there and grab him because uh, it's, uh, you don't, you don't do that. You, you don't go back there. And, right. Uh, so it's, yeah. that lady is really, she's popped up a few times and she just yells while I'm filming. I'm like, I'm right here. Yeah. But, I, I think no there's spatial a, awareness, right? I think there's a different. Uh, <laughs> I think there's a different attitude toward filming now compared to you know when we were actually using real cameras 12 years ago instead of everyone being able to do it on their iPhone because now people. Oh are just yeah. Like, oh, you're filming. So is half the world. Like, I don't care. Yeah. I'm going to interrupt. You pull you. back and there's 30 other people filming TikTok videos right there or something. Right. And the boy comes up. He goes, "Are you filming for?" And he said YouTube. And then he listed off like three sites. I'm like, I have. You might as well be speaking Latin. I don't know what those are. Uh, you did this, and, and I, you know, want to say, you know, I've been doing this a while, but they don't, you know, okay. <laughs> oh, TikTok, okay. Um, but <laughs> uh, I know it's like this is a hot set here. Don't you understand? <laughs> but I do kind of like it because it keeps it interesting. And I say, look, you know, you're going to have all sorts of factors coming in that are going to mm -hmm. keep you from doing your flow. We're just going to keep going. 
yeah. even though this lady's over here screaming. And, you know, it gives me a chance to kind of talk about it a little bit. Like, you know, you never know what's going to pop mm -hmm. up. It's okay. Just keep going. If it became too distracting, I would shut the camera off and just stand there for a while and wait yeah. and stare at her. And she would never even notice. But, yeah, that she's interesting. I've She just yells or she talks on the phone really loud. And I always wonder, she does this on purpose? I don't know. I mean, I'm doing these big warriors and everything here. And she does yeah. that. But then yeah, again, yeah. that's that's her privilege. I'm outside in a public space. There's nothing mm -hmm. I can say about it. It's not like she's in my house doing that. Yeah. But that ability to – your ability to read the room and, and ability to adapt to things, that comes from theater, and that's something that we can really benefit from. So. Well, yeah, and I, it's very easy, and I've done this too, to get in way too much inside yourself. Uh, when you've done something a lot, you're just thinking for yourself and, and you always have to turn it back to the people you're trying to bring in to work with, to help, because you are an instructor, you're a teacher. And you have to say, really, it's not about me. It's about trying to get as many people to access this as possible so they can improve their lives and they can share it on. And it, it keeps going that way. Um, but I've done that before, too, you know, and I beat myself up where I teach and I realize I'm not even paying attention sometimes to the room. I'm inside my own head. Uh, I'm talking, but I'm thinking about something else. That, that would happen in theater sometimes, too. If you do a show enough, sometimes that's the challenge. Like, ah, I feel it's the I feel like I just did this. I just did this. I just did this. I just did this scene a minute ago. You know, it was a day ago, but I've done it so many times. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking about what I'm going to eat afterwards. I'm going to go to Steak and Shake with everyone. I'm going to watch this. I want to see this later. And then you realize, mm, no, I don't want that. It's not honest. It's not good. So you mm. bring yourself back to it. Yeah. But it's, it's that tender balance of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I want, to, I want to shift gears a little bit and, and ask you about your son. It's Dane, right? It's, is it Dane, Dane or Dwayne? It is Dane. Dane. D-A-N-E. Dane. Because yes. my mom was, God bless her, was 100% Danish. And uh, it's a very strong name, I think, of Hamlet too. Hamlet, yes. the melancholy Dane. I've been, I've been called, I've been called Dane a few times. Dane, get over here, Dane. Uh huh. You know? I, funny, so, um, I called Dane Dean when, when we first, when he was a baby. <laughs> I was still getting. Did you have this? Because your son's name is Declan, right? Declan, yeah. Declan, mm -hmm. and I, 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 you know, when he's a baby, I was still not used to saying his name, and sometimes I would say Dean because I knew you. <laughs> And my um, my head yeah. of theater in in college was named Dean. Mm. I didn't know any Dane, so I would call him Dean. But it sounds like Dane with an accent. Dane. Yeah. See, <laughs> I call um, I call Declan Tron and Kaya sometimes. So you know. How come? I don't know. I just they're they're all children. I'm just trying to take care of uh -huh. all of them, and I don't know which <laughs> child I'm trying to take care of. I'm like, uh huh. I'm like, hey, Tron. As long as you go get it on the, by doing. the third name, uh huh, by the third name. Yeah. Uh, and then sometimes I'll call Dane something, but he's three now, so he talks mm -hmm. constantly. But he's like, Dad, don't call me that. I'm <laughs> Dane Sorensen V. He'll say his full name. I'm oh. Dane Sorensen V. Wow. So, <laughs> so, so, so I'm curious about that because you said you're. You know, you're almost 48 years old. Um, what did you did you kind of consciously decide that you wanted to have kids later in life? Did you, you know? Did you just meet the right person, or like what? You know, what happened? What? Well, we, you know, it's the attitude. We'll see what happens. You know, mm -hmm. I I didn't know. I just wasn't sure about the whole thing. So I see when I hit 40, I'm like, I don't know. You know, my dad was an older father. He was 41 mm -hmm. when I was born. But I was 44 when Dane was born. Of course, that's another reason to stay fit and healthy when you're crawling around doing everything with him. I want to be able to do oh, everything yeah. with him, wrestle and everything. So, you know, we have a bounce house that we put up. And I was in it with him for an hour and a half the other night. I'm like, this is a workout. You know, jumping around the bounce house and diving yeah. and stuff. And um, so that's such a gift to be able to do that. But we just, he was a little bit of a surprise, I guess, you know, one day. Oh, what was it? My wife, actually, we were in Colorado, and I was teaching a class that morning. And then after that, we were leaving to go to Illinois to see my wife's family. And my wife came to the class because, you know, I, she came to the class, and then we were going to go to the airport afterwards. And after the class, she goes, hey, let's stop by Walgreens and get you some sunglasses because I had left my sunglasses on some mountain 
filming the day before. I did that a lot, actually. Like, why is it so bright? But I'd climb up somewhere to film and I'd leave my glasses up there. Mm. So in Colorado, that's my gift. I left sunglasses on all the peaks. Well, and, very um, nice of you. So we went to Walgreens. It was very generous. And went to Walgreens and she went right to the pregnancy test aisle. I'm like, what are we doing here? She goes, I think I'm pregnant. <laughs> and she has a little bit of a southern accent. She went to LSU and I just, you know, I, I was shocked. I didn't, I didn't expect it. Uh, and so we did another test the next day and she was, and, um, you know, it was, it was, you know, the father pangs and everything. I went through mm-hmm. nine months of excitement and anxiety yeah. and angst and excitement and confusion. So, you know, uh, you know, I, and I had, yeah, my dad had passed away, um, a couple years Well, he passed away in 2017, Mm-hmm. So that was tough. You know, I wanted to have my dad around for all this, but I always yeah. thought my dad was amazing, amazing dad and and father and, and husband. So, mm-hmm. you know, that, that really inspired me. You know, I always talk to my, I talk to my dad and my mom, God bless her all the time. So about these things, but no, it mm-hmm. was a little bit of a surprise. Yeah. And, uh, but Dane is, they're actually out of town for till Tuesday. It's Friday right now. I've mm-hmm. never had this much time to myself at the house. Wow. I was excited, but I do miss them. I really miss the Dane also because I spent a lot of time with them. Yeah. But uh, but I'm getting things done, and I have my other baby here, Addie, the first right. baby, the girl. Yes. Um, so, um, so, yeah, <laughs> m- m- oh, my, I was going to say uh, my wife lost her mom um, about a, mm. in 20, oh, I think 2018. Yeah, it was 2018. Yeah. Um, and we had Declan in 2020, so she's also gone through that um, that struggle of being a motherless mom and you being the you know the fatherless yeah. dad. It's 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 really tough. I can't. You, yeah, yeah. I can't think about it. It really. I mean, I think about my parents constantly. I talk to them a lot. I get up in the morning and I talk to them. You know, but I. I can't think about it because it's just too darn depressing a lot because they, my mom met Dane a few times, but she wasn't doing well at all mentally and physically. So Mm. she may not even been aware of it, but I'm very thankful that they did meet. Dane was a little baby Mm -hmm. uh, because I had moved my mom out to Colorado to be near us because my sister's out there also. But um, yeah, you know, my Dane is like a mini version of my dad. My dad's name is Mr. Bob, so we always call him Mini Mr. Bob a lot, like mm. smile and everything. So I, yeah, it's just how it is, you know. And I, it doesn't take anything away from the blessing that Dane is and everything, but it, it's oh, it stings sometimes. It's something that, you know, I guess you know, you, you kind of join a club when you lose a parent or both parents. You mm-hmm. join this unique. Did your mom? Very, is your mom living? No, she passed away oh, okay. uh, Christmas Day two Christmases oh, wow. ago. I'm sorry. Yeah, she she went about two and a half years, I think, after my dad died. But yeah, Christmas morning, 2019. Mm-hmm. Um, but but I said I moved her out from Wisconsin to Colorado. That was, was I drove her out. That was interesting, huh? Well, he was in. Well, I'm just doing the math here. He was in his eight mid 80s. My or dad. How old is, yeah, or how old is he? My dad was 83 and my mom was 80 when they passed. Yeah. Um, I don't think my mom was that long for the world after dad had passed. Um, Mm. I mean, she had about two and a half years and she was a very introverted uh, Dane, you know, so she, uh, it was tough. We couldn't really get her out to Colorado to visit. My dad was a gregarious one. So Mm. um, I don't want to labor the point, but you know, I, yeah, it is, it's, it's difficult a lot without, without, um, my parents, my wife's family is wonderful. So th- that's great. They're actually with them right now in Illinois that's with great. the whole family. So, so that's, that's such a blessing uh, with that. Yeah. But yeah, little Mr. Bob, you know, I knew well, that. I knew when, when Dane was born, he would take on a lot of traits of my dad and he had. So that's really neat. Yeah, that's really cool to hear that, that he's uh, so similar to your dad. And I just want to say, um, you know, it's okay for you to belabor the point. You know, it's... Uh-huh. It's a, well, it's a I, struggle I that, it's a struggle that every, not everyone, but it's a struggle that a lot of people are going through. And yeah. know, part of, part of the idea behind the show is to, Hey, let's, you know, let's talk about things that suck. You know, it's not all going to be, uh-huh. so 
It's Anyways. true, and I and I always think I'm very blessed that I had such a great relationship with my parents because I, I have very good friends that don't. Uh, one of my best friends hasn't talked to his parents in years, maybe never again. You know, they they just mm. didn't. It just didn't happen. They didn't get along. They had a lot of issues, and I would have issues with my parents, but we were we were true blue with everything. You know, that yeah. they instilled the love of of old movies and old TV shows, and uh, the best times are very subtle. Just mm-hmm. sitting at the bakery in Wisconsin for a couple hours, talking, just chatting about life and t- chatting with people who c- would come in and, and whatnot. That's my idea of heaven on earth a lot, is just having great conversations. Yeah. Um, not living in a social media reality, things like that, mm-hmm. but but being with my parents and planning the day and watching Columbo with them and having dinner and going for drives. Yeah. Uh, I love stuff like that. I'm a very simple guy that way. And that mm-hmm. translates great to to the fitness that we do because it's very uh, bare bones, right? You just yeah. got your body, got your body weight, got your 24 seven gym right here and go anywhere, do it anytime. There's really no limits to that. Yeah. I mean, would you, so I'm, I'm, would you say that, you know, one of the reasons why I would just be curious for you, would you, if I, if I asked you to rate your overall happiness level, just in general, uh-huh. let's like say like the last six months, what's, what's, What's your score on a one through ten? One being the worst, ten being oh, ten being happier. Well, it can fluctuate, but I say probably about an eight. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not a Pollyanna. I I have moments, uh, but you know, I find if I don't get good sleep, I'm miserable. That's yeah. a big one. And Dane has been in our bed a lot lately, which I don't mm. mind. I love having him in there, but he likes to kick his dad a lot. <laughs> so I have to sleep. I'm almost hovering off the bed. I mean, he, and he just. He'll cuddle with his mom. He doesn't do that with me, but he'll yeah. save his feet and his hands for me. Yeah. You know, see, I always have my arms up when I sleep in a defensive posture mm-hmm. uh, because he could nail you in the groin or the stomach. Um, yeah. Declan, <laughs> Declan likes headbutting me. Oh, He'll just yeah. headbutt me. He'll just throw his whole yeah. head weight at my head. And you're just like, you just headbutted oh. me. Uh-huh. And then, oh, so? <laughs> yeah. He's like, he has no idea. He's like, yeah, that was fun. Let's do it again. Yeah, come on. We're playing. <laughs> come right. on, Dad. Uh, yeah, they, yeah, the leg drops, the Hulk Hogan, like the leg will lift and like, oh, here it comes. And you put your, so I, I've developed this sixth sense, like Neo in the matrix where I can actually wake up and catch him, like catch nice. his arm or his leg before he's going to get me. Mm. And, uh, then I'll, somebody's get out of bed, grum like, son of a bitch, you know, get out of bed and go to the bathroom or something. Um, mm-hmm. and then I, I push him over and then my wife later will say, you pushed him right on me. I'm like, I didn't even realize it. You know, I just kind of do here, go over there, Dane. You know, oh, yeah. and then, but I love him to pieces and I come to bed and if he's in there, I'll just hold his hand for a long time and look at him, you know, mm-hmm. cause I'm like, shit, it's three and, mm-hmm. you know, it's going to change real fast. That's what everyone tells me. Mm-hmm. People much younger than me who have teenagers or children in their twenties as like, it's going to change real fast. He's not going to be that little boy anymore. We were at Disney last week and he has his woody shirt on and his shorts and his cowboy boots and. Yeah. And he's just such a such a delight to be with, and like you know, so is life. You're trying to how do I how do I compute all this stuff? It's mm-hmm. it's moving so quickly. So I don't so remember my wife so, and I talk about. It. I don't remember him being a baby. I see photos. I'm like, okay, yeah. But it moves well, so quickly. It's hard to remember. Yeah, fortunately, um, you know, our biology has learned to black out the first six months of the baby experience because. Yeah. It's, generally you know i don't know at least for me it was really tough and not sleeping and um you know just Mm -hmm. having a having a child screaming at you for most of the day is not a pleasant experience it's Uh, so strange you go from total silence and and control over your dominion to dropping a bomb right in the middle right exactly that's (laughs) that's how i think of parenting i'm like wouldn't it be nice if we started off with like if they started out easy and then they got more difficult instead of (laughs) Like well, the wave. Yeah, but I know people, and I'm, I want to push them down a well. They're like, well, my baby slept 12 hours every night. Like, go to hell. <laughs> you know, and there are yeah, people I yeah. know like, oh, we had, to wake, we had to wake him up to feed him. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks a uh, lot. They can, they, uh, can, they can shut up. Uh-huh. Um, That's so funny because Dane was up every hour, and – you know, my wife would feed him, but I was up too. We're always up, you know. Mm-hmm. Especially, it's so weird all of a sudden. Like, what's that noise? It was, you're used to having no noise in the house. Right. All of a sudden, 
Yeah, it's a it's a big transition. So I wanted to I wanted to ask you, and then I wanted to move on to my my part two of this. Um, do you, do you have difficulty being in the present? Or do do you worry about you know? Do you find that you are thinking about you know your business? Are you thinking about oh what do I need to post on social media? Do you do you, yeah. do you worry about? Well, sometimes my wife, who is a numbers person, she has her master's in statistics. Mm-hmm. And she's great with revenue. She's my accountant. She's our accountant. She's great. But and she says, she goes, Sean, you just have to budget your time. It's like, well, yeah, of course. But then I realize, oh, I'm not. You know, actually plan out what you're going to do because that's the danger I get in, Dean, is that, uh, you know, the actor in me and the spontaneous guy just kind of goes and goes and goes without a lot of balance sometimes. So, mm. Um, my best days are when I just put the phone, you know, I, I, okay, I'll do a post and the phone's down for about four hours. I'm not, I'm not looking at anything. I'm going to focus on what I'm doing now. I'm going to do some studying. I'm going to do some writing. I'm going to do this. So my mind just isn't out of control. It's not restless because my mind is restless. It's, it just drives you into, a, into the ground sometimes, you know, mm-hmm. you, it's, it's balance. It's what we preach all the time. Doesn't mean we follow it, right? Yeah. Doesn't mean that I'm not going to have some cheesecake every now and then, mm-hmm. which I actually don't. I don't eat cheesecake anymore, but something else. <laughs> um, yes. But finding that balance, how do you do with that? Because posting, do you plan your posts? Do you have people that help so you with them? I, so it's a combination. So we have, I have someone who helps me with that. Um, he'll kind of, you know, we kind of have a template for a week by week Mm -hmm. and then I'll give him ideas or he'll give me ideas and I'll refine it. Um, Mm -hmm. or I'll come up with an idea and then I'll say, Hey, this is great. Let's post this sometime this week. Um, but before for a very, you're good, but before for a very long time, I would, um, I would just do it day by day. Uh huh. I would just do it day by day. I would think about what am I going to post today? And it would be like super stressful. And now, now I have the, the issue or, you know, sometimes I do feel that, but, um, honestly, one of the biggest stresses for me is what am I going to make for dinner tonight? If I don't plan it out in advance, it just, it hits two o'clock and I'm like, Oh my God, do I need to dethaw the meat? What what am I going to make? How is Declan going to eat it? Um, but anyways, (laughs) that's to answer your question. Uh, it's, well, it's, it, it's the unlimited possibilities of what we do. It's amazing, and it can also drive you insane. We've talked about that before. Mm-hmm. Fitness, what we do is it's unending. There's really no limit to it. And right. what you can post, what you can do, and you and I stick our fingers in a lot of things: videos, blogs, books. I mean, I books. was just at uh, Books a Million yesterday, and there's my books, there's Dean's books. I mean, we're everywhere, and mm-hmm. we don't have any, putting limits on that. And I think to a lot of other people, it's probably, you know, it's like, well, that's very impressive, but it comes with a price also. Um, yeah. Not be able to shut it down, not be able to balance it out. And mm-hmm. I'm always looking for my next thrill. It's like my next big score. It's like you're, mm-hmm. I'm a drug addict sometimes for fitness. Mm-hmm. Like I, I there's and so many is... places I could go and film. There's so many challenges I could do. There's so many people I could work with. But if you think like that too much, you won't get anything done. You're just always right. thinking about it. You have to just sit down and do this. And, Sometimes and, I'll sit like, oh, I'm going to take an hour. I'm going to sit on my laptop and just answer comments on my video. <laughs> like that's always something good to do. But there's yeah. thousands and thousands of them, which I love. But I'm like, man, there's a lot of uh, comments on this video. I had no idea. But sometimes I do that because it's great to interact with people that took mm-hmm. the time to comment. And that helps focus my brain. But sometimes I'll just, I'll go, I'll go crazy with the, yeah. with the options. <laughs> so that's what, so that's what, is that something that is, is really significant for you? Preventing you from being in the present is just thinking about all the different things that you could do. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, mm-hmm. sometimes it is. And, you know, I've been doing this a while now. Mm-hmm. It, it's kind of like dog years. Every year in fitness is like seven years because I, I <laughs> film so much and I, I post so much and I teach so much and, and write so much. It, it's very, um, it's very compact and very intense. Mm-hmm. And that's the way I like it, but, uh, it does prevent me, you know, Oh, I should post something and should is a terrible word. Like, no, right. and what, I've, I've done much better lately. I'm like, Oh, I'll do it later. Yeah. Oh, I want to post about this. No, dummy. You just posted an hour ago. Don't post it. <laughs> right. Especially right. on Facebook. They're the algorithm sucked for you right now. They want you to pay money to boost posts. You know, right, so right. I, 
I don't know. I just got a TikTok account, but I don't know how I feel about that. But I think I can just that's, post uh, what I do on Instagram and put it on TikTok because I don't want anything that's going to take more of my time and energy right. away from my family, away from myself, and away from my work and my study. So yeah. I'm very peculiar about that also. I just want to do what I know. And I'm almost 50. I don't care about the new things that much. I'm like, yeah, that doesn't really interest me much. Yeah. TikTok is a TikTok is a different beast and a different different conversation. And uh, I was actually just talking with my wife yesterday about I was scrolling through Instagram. I'm like, content is totally different than it was two years ago. I'm like, it is yeah. it is it is evolved significantly. Um, and yeah, thinking about that is just and then seeing other content and then seeing like, oh, I could do that. It just it just creates all this shame. It just, it's not, you know, and then you finish it and you're like, oh, I feel so much worse than I started. I, why am I scrolling on this? Um, yeah, scrolling. Yeah. Uh, well, what it does to your brain too, what social media, and I don't want to say too much because, you know, I post on there, but mm -hmm. I think that's what's great about fitness is it, it's definitely something that demands total focus mm -hmm. and that you have to get all the other distractions away and you just do this. Other things you can watch. I'm sure a lot of people just watch our videos and that's fine, but we demand usually, hey, get up and do it. You know, so mm -hmm. leave everything else behind. Get in the moment here with me because being in the moment in these days is such, is what a blessing that is to actually be mm -hmm. focused in the moment. Like I was just at the gym. I love going to the gym. Had some, uh, I was listening to, uh, I don't know, queen or something, having a mm -hmm. great time. But I look around and everybody's on their phones doing this, scrolling. scrolling. <laughs> of course, you and I, the posture too, the head is down. I'm like, yeah. oh. You, know, you just want like to walk between, over and push them back into proper posture. I know, and I, I, I do it out of love. Like, I, that's what, <laughs> I'm like, I want to help you here. Do some, do some shoulder stretches. Do some, <laughs> do some side bends. Do some, because in between sets, I'll, I'll do twists. I'll do all sorts of movements and mm. I'll air guitar. I think it's that's, that's important. Yeah, I know. I'm like, oh, we got Queen on here, you know, or Motley Crue, and I. Um, but <laughs> I like to be in that rhythm, in that movement, in that flow. And wait, what were we talking about, Dean? There was the initial. Um, <laughs> we I was uh, asking you about overall happiness, and then we were talking about happiness, and then we were talking the moment, about yeah. being in the moment and what prevents you from being in the present. Um, and then we uh -huh. were talking about social media and that. Yeah. Oh, I was saying social media that it. Like everything is good and moderate. Like cars are good if you're using them to drive a, a distance. It's bad if you use a car to try to run people over. So, you know, like social <laughs> I've, media. I've never heard that analogy, um, but yeah. <laughs> but everything, you know, a hammer is good if you use it to hammer nails. It's bad if you go out and try to hit people with it. So it's, it's extra season it, four. It's like anything, you know, social media is, is there. But if it's very easy to fall into that trap, and I am too, of the scrolling, and you just have to be very aware. You know, more yeah. you know, awareness is half the battle. But, uh, you know, fitness videos demand that you get up and move. I think that's why sometimes the algorithms don't. Like, I'll post a new video somewhere. It'll get a little bit of traction. But if I post a funny meme, that will get hundreds of likes and comments. Right. Right. Because, and I understand, I understand people aren't going online, hey, I want to find someone that's making me, make me do some really challenging exercise. You know, I want to go online and be entertained. My wife does it at night. She likes to scroll Facebook because yeah. she works all day and she needs kind of an outlet. She likes to watch cooking shows mm -hmm. and that works great for her. But uh, yeah, being in the moment, I mean, thousands of books have been written about it, haven't haven't they? And what it means to be in the moment. But mm -hmm. I mean, when I'm with Dane and we're having fun, that's those are the times that I, I seek out, you know, Dad, mm -hmm. come play with me. And I always think, well, if I ignore him, I'm going to regret that later. I got, right. go, I want to go play with him. Not that I yeah. have to, but I want to. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, doing power yoga, the flows and stuff, that certainly is in the moment. That's like a different world. Just mm -hmm. flowing on this mat by a lake is an extraordinary experience. Yeah. And that you get to film it and share it with people. Yeah. Um, I mean, do you feel that when you film? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, very rarely do I film and I think, oh, I'm still filming. What am I doing right now? What am I going to do later? <laughs> yeah. Usually I am, uh -huh. I am, I am completely in it. And then by the time I'm finished, I'm like, wow, I feel great that I did that. I feel great that I created something. Um, yeah. I find that the more that I can do something that demands my entire focus, 
the happier that I am. If I can work in a notebook instead of working on my computer, I'm happier. If I can yeah. work within a single window on my computer instead of 18 different competing tabs and, and going back and forth between four tasks, I'm a lot happier. So something that I constantly try to do is how can I do what I need to do today in flow? How can I take my entire focus, devote to that? How can I take deliberate breaks between those tasks so that I'm recharging and can enjoy what I'm doing and not feel yeah. burnt out? But yeah, it's a constant struggle. It's not like I a do it every day. Flow. It's a state of flow. I was trying to explain it to my wife yeah. a couple months ago. It hit me. I'm like, I'm not in flow right now, Julian. I need to be in flow. Yeah. There's too many things breaking up my flow. And it, the way mm -hmm. our, my wife and I, we're very compatible because we're very different. Right. And um, I, I got we, that we just based on a tiny bit of what you said. I understood that you were total <laughs> yeah, opposite. Opera and statistics. You know, it's very, <laughs> very different. But we complement each other very well. You, you know, if you have two people that are too similar, you'll you'll battle for supremacy all the time. You know, yeah. like, but if you're you can bring different ideas to each other and, and mesh them together. Like the other day, my wife was telling me something about work and taxes and I was offering some questions. She kept saying no. She goes, that's that's not what I'm saying. I said, but Jilly, my mind works very different than yours. Take advantage yeah. of it. The questions I'm asking could very well come up, you know, because I mm -hmm. see things from a different perspective. She goes, okay. And then she'll say, you know, challenge me on things. Sometimes you're like, oh, well, what do you know? And then you go away. I'm like, oh, she's totally correct about that. Yeah. You know, just being stubborn about it. But in all fame, I'm like, you, you were you were right about that. You know, mm -hmm. use, you know, you know, use me, Jillian. And she'll say, use me, Sean, you know, for... Dane, use me. And he'll go, Dad, I'm pooping. Okay, don't use me. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's potty, um, he's potty trained now, but uh, it, it's that great. Do you and your wife do that as well, the, the complimenting each other? Yes. I was actually going to, I was going to answer that with a, um, with a, we had a podcast with Kelly Starrett from the Ready State, formerly known as Mobility Wad. Um, yeah, the supple, I, uh, the supple leopard. Leopard. Yes. I, I have his book. Yeah, I've it's, read it's a lot. It's an awesome. Of his book. Uh, it's an awesome book. Um, it's one of the classics in uh, yeah. fitness. And I and I asked him like, "What's your number one habit that helps you with your overall happiness?" And he said, "It is in basically I decide how I do what I do in my life through the lens of does this get me to spend more time with my wife." Um, and one of the one of the components of that answer was he he has to he he needs to he not that he needs to remind himself because he knows this coming into it, but he and his wife have similar goals. They want the same outcomes, but they have different visions. They have different goals about how to achieving that. So instead of coming into the conversation, you know, and hearing her describe her method a different way, he comes into it intrigued thinking, what is your vision? Because it differs from mine. Let me learn from this instead of looking at it as let me compete with this. And, um, you know, if I was to answer your question in all honesty, I think m me and my wife, we still kind of have, um, we still struggle coming together and saying, let me show you my vision. No, let me show you my vision, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and um, it's, I think we're, I think we do a good job of eventually coming to the realization that we both have visions that will help in the end. But I think initially when we present our visions that there's, there's friction and that there's, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't happen yeah. smoothly, but I think in the end we do come together with our visions and we're able yeah. to have a, you know, a, a productive conversation, but you know um, it just takes us a little longer to get there than I think most people. But that's the method. People. And it's good also to not there. water down, you know, you, you want to be, something I pray on all the time is when to be bold and when to be patient, when to be bold and when to be patient, you know, cause mm. you could spend your whole life like trying to pound your fists on everything and, and not get anywhere or spend your whole life just waiting all the time. So you're always, you know, stop and go, stop and go a lot. Okay. Maybe I should mm. just ease off. Maybe I shouldn't post right now. Maybe I shouldn't film today. I'm not in the best of moods or it's kind of yeah. rain outside. Um, but you know, it, you have to, I like that one. The, what Kelly had said, because, you know, you want that uh, harmony in your personal life too, because that projects to your professional life as well. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not going to be good on camera if I'm miserable or if I'm angry. I've tried that a few times if I was really upset about something. 
Mm. Like after my dad passed, I didn't film for about five weeks. You know, and that's unheard of for me because I love to film. Mm. Like, you know, like, oh, I have a film today. I, I need to do something. It's like drinking water for me a lot. It's a great sort of therapy and expression for me to do with creativity. So to not film for about five weeks, it was very therapeutic for me, but it did feel really good to come back and film. I felt mm. more of myself again, like myself and what, you know, my purpose was. So mm -hmm. that was very good. Um, you know, my wife, uh, my one of my latest books, the Pilates for Athletes book, Mm -hmm. She's the other model in that. But you talk about different brain types because I put her in the book. She does the warm-ups and cool-downs. She looks fantastic. She was great. But she doesn't promote the book. You know, you and I are of the mind. We're always promoting ourselves. We're always promoting yeah. our brand. Mm -hmm. um, we're very used to it. But to someone who doesn't do that, it's like, well, what do you mean promote it? Well, post about it. Okay, and I'm like, do you, here, I'll, I'll write what you should say. <laughs> I'll, tell you, I'll write everything for you. Just put it on your page, you know, for yeah. your family or something. Uh, and uh, other books I've done, like, there are different models in there. I'm like, why aren't you promoting the book? It just doesn't make any sense to me why you're not promoting it. I mean, you're in a book. It's in stores. Yeah. It's fun. You're in the fitness industry. Uh, but, you know, we only see things through our own lenses, what the mm -hmm. lenses we want to see. And then to the other person, it seems absurd. Right. Where... Other people see you or I out filming somewhere. That's absurd. What are they yeah. doing out there? That's weird, you know. Uh, but thank God we do it, you know, because yeah. it's, uh, it, it definitely fit, uh, serves a need in society and mm -hmm. uh, that we have no shame doing it. I don't care. I'll film anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, that was all great. Um, <laughs> I want to move on. Uh, I want to move on to part two now, and I have a few kind of rapid fire questions for you, which never is rapid, but I have a few questions that I. I I'll, that I you know what? I'll on. I'll work to keep them. It's like inside the actor's studio. He would ask <laughs> questions at the end. Uh, you ever see that show? James Lipton. He passed away, but he no. would ask these questions at the end. Okay. Um, anyway, I have not look inside the actor's studio. Will Ferrell parodied him on Saturday Night Live. It was very funny. Okay. I can I can definitely see that. Will so, Ferrell's kind of hip, right? I can mention him. He's still hip. Um, he's Elf, right? Ron yes. Burgundy. Yes, yes. Hope I hope I hope kids way, still know that. One of the greatest cups. This is look at that. I love that. That's Charlie and Charlie Snoopy. Brown and Snoopy, but there's um, that's Addie and I. Oh, very nice. I should, I should have brought treats and put them in my pocket. That would have got Addie over here. That that would have worked. If you want, um, I can go get some treats. <laughs> I think I think we're okay. Um, okay. So I have a what do you, what is one habit, belief, or mindset that has helped you significantly? Not the most, but maybe one of the most in terms of your overall happiness. Uh, shut the phone off early at night and don't turn it on until the afternoon. Mm, wow, the whole morning without yeah. it. That is that sounds. Oh yeah, awesome. I've been doing that a lot. I turn it on like ten or eleven, and mm -hmm. by then I. I read in the morning. I like to read and, and be very focused, say my prayers, take mm -hmm. Addie outside and just look at the trees and think. And t I talk to myself a lot, but I love um, that. And like, since Dane and my wife aren't here, I got up, I read for a while in bed. I read last night in bed for a while, which is great. I like reading historical uh, nonfiction. Mm -hmm. I read a lot of that. And um, I get up and I, I read and I drink a lot of water. I make a smoothie. I take Addie out and I put on something inspiring on the TV. Mm. And I'll sit down and take notes. I love mm. doing that. that like I, awesome. I was getting ready for your podcast. Everything I did this morning was to get ready for this podcast. I want to get my mind in the right frame of mind. I went to the gym real quick. I want to get a little pump, get my, you know, yeah. get things flowing because a body at rest is very different intellectually than a body that's moving with the blood mm. flowing and the mind going. Um, yeah. and driving through, you know, encountering some bad drivers on the way and, and all sorts of things. Uh, yeah. But it was all to get ready to chat with you, Dean, because I wanted to be in a good frame of mind for that. And I get a little nervous because I haven't done a podcast in a few weeks. Mm -hmm. And I, I, it's a performer in me. I want to be 100% for yeah. your podcast. Well, well, I'm honored. Uh, thank you very much, and thank you for sharing your your morning your morning habits. Uh, My pleasure. And I didn't keep it to awesome. a short answer, did I? I <laughs> no, you did. That was great. I loved okay. all of that. Um, 
So, so my next question is what's one thing that you do for your health that you think is overlooked or undervalued by others? I go for long walks every night. I love walking. Mm. One of the, moving back to Florida, uh, one of the main positives of it was uh, I go for night walks again. I like nighttime. I, I'm most productive at night. I'll go out for like an hour and a half or two hours. And where I live, it's a nice town. I can just walk. I do loops, listen to piano music. I listen to sermons. I listen to podcasts, um, maybe this one. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, walking for me is, well, it's the movement. It's being outside. It's the focus. It's uh, I, I, I dream so much on my walks. That's where all my mm. dreams come from a lot. And Okay. Uh, I really, I've always enjoyed walking. My mom instilled that in me. She always went for walks. And I always mm. thought it was silly as a kid. Who goes for walks? I know, yeah. And then you become you an adult. You and you bike. Yeah. Then you become an adult and walks are fun and nature and hiking is fun. And you're a kid and you're like, this is dumb. Um, yeah, and now you're like, now you want to do well, these Why do you want to walk? Things. I want to go running. I want to do this. But, uh, and then I, I started doing it in my late 20s. It was when I was doing theater. And in between shows I would come home and stay with my parents in Wisconsin which I loved and those walks became very special because no matter what I did where I traveled what I did what I did I, I would always come home and things were pretty much the same and mm. I knew they never would be uh, I'm very I was always very aware that this doesn't last forever nothing does so we mm -hmm. you know those night walks in that little town of West Salem Wisconsin were always so special to me clear skies and, yeah. and the smells and the sounds and again, you, you go and you, you dream, you dream. Mm. I love that dream during long walks at night. Dream you, you do. Your Tips mind will Sean. do what you tell it to do. It really will. The battlefield yeah. of your mind, it will do what you tell it to do. Mm -hmm. Um, all right. So I was going to ask, do you have a set time for a regular stress relief activity? Is there anything that you haven't mentioned that you, that you do regularly for stress relief? Uh, well, I'm, um, I'm sitting on the floor right now. I, when everyone goes to bed, I come down here and I sit on this floor and I do all sorts of stretches and I write and I, I mm. take notes and I usually put something fun on the TV and, um, that's what I like to do. Or, you know, if I'm going to film the next day, I try out things that I'm going to do the next day. If it's something new or something that I discovered, mm. I'm going to work on a little bit that night. Sometimes I don't, I just do it with the cameras on and I've been pretty good because uh, yeah. again, I don't overthink it. So like, oh, I really shouldn't be able to do this balance pose right now, but I didn't overthink it at all. I just went into it. So it's okay. Mm -hmm. I haven't done Bird of Paradise in two months. How the hell am I doing this right now? But I didn't, I didn't think about it. I just did it. You know, okay. So let's fake that there's an animal coming at me. So I have to get out of it. But at night I like to, I lay, I do all sorts of things on the floor. I do stretches. Mm -hmm. Um, I do core workouts while I'm watching some classic old eighties film or movie from the fifties. I don't know, but that's, mm. that's the nighttime is very special to me. I wish I only needed two hours of sleep because I would stay up till 4 a.m. every night writing and doing things. Wow. That sounds like a great night routine. I love that. I love it. You know, and I, I say a lot of guys would go out and do, you know, just go out and go to bars. And I don't, I don't do that anymore. I used to do that in my twenties, but I, I love yeah. just, doing healthy things at night and prepares you for the next day. Yeah. That's a, well, that's something that, that you, I think you start doing when you have a, a, a long-term partner. Cause you're like, I don't need to go out. She's right here. Oh yeah. She's right here. Yeah. I don't, uh, who has time I, for that? We were joking about that. Who has time for any, like a mistress? We are laughing about it, of course, but like, Oh, that's so annoying. And I, I'm very happy with everything. I don't want. Yeah. I don't want to do anything else right now. Everyone else is so damn annoying. I don't want to spend time with other people. Yeah. So <laughs> we we went out for dinner the other night, my wife and I and Dane, and we had a great time. It was fantastic. Yeah. We're uh. <laughs> yeah, as long as we hand deck on a phone with some cocoa melon on it, then we're we're good for oh. dinners. But uh. Yeah, that's yeah. That he's stuff a, is crack. Oh. It is crack for children. It absolutely is. Um. Yeah, I kind of pulled Dane away from some of those. He likes to watch unboxing things with toys, but those in themselves are designed as crack because the rewards keep coming all the way through the video. The dopamine hit never stops. Mm -hmm. So um, a lot of times, actually, we watch The Simpsons sometimes, and okay. I watch them carefully. I'm like, no, there's no violence. There's no swearing. <laughs> there's nothing like that. 
Yeah. He asked me what that means. I'm like, it's a Simpson thing. It's very nuanced. I can't really explain it sometimes, but I'll yeah. try. Um, <laughs> I've become very hawkish about what he watches too, because some mm. things they put him into a coma on the chair because they just keep hitting him with dopamine constantly. Like yeah. us, like adults too. Yeah. That's a, uh... That's very, what's the, that's very uh, careful of you. That's, that's the word I'm looking for. That's, and I'm not always because sometimes I'm like, well, I'll just let him, I got to work on something, you know, let him, I'm like, nah, if he puts his head down on the chair and I talk to him and he doesn't even hear me, then I know it's, oh, okay, we got to shut the TV off. It's too much. Mm. So yeah. his little brain is kind of, it's kind of spinning out of control a little bit. Yeah. Um, do you regularly reflect or analyze yourself? I do you sit um, down once a quarter or once a week and just go over things that you did? How can you improve or, you know, what's going yeah. well? What could be better? Yeah, a lot. I know the things that I'm supposed to be doing more of, and I know the things I'm supposed to be doing less of. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, you got to look for the, you definitely do more of the essential things, reading and studying and family time. And, um, you know, take eating better and things like that. Then the things that are the distracting things, social media, uh, Mm -hmm. watching things that aren't really inspiring, um, sitting too long, things like that. I'm, I'm, I've always been very aware of that stuff. Do I do it? Not all the time, Mm -hmm. but uh, I'm, that's, I keep a journal. I kept a journal every night since 1998, pretty much every night. So I always write out things in that, that keeps me disciplined. That's huge. That's... What I do, but sometimes I get lazy. I just write out what I do instead of, you know, put some thoughts down there because mm-hmm. having a pen and putting it to parchment is very therapeutic. You said that earlier, more so than typing, but actually yeah. writing. Plus, right. writing is a lost art. I, I could still do cursive, but most people don't know what cursive is. I have a combination of cursive and regular writing that I use, but um, these are all very, it's a good skill. If you write it out longhand, you're more apt to uh, stay consistent with it. Mm. Yeah, I have very terrible handwriting that only I can read. Um, but That's it's good. it's it's a secret. Yes, it's a secret script. But uh, it it it's not meant to be read. I mean, it's just something for me to. It's part of my process for getting it down on paper, and it feels better than typing it out. It goes a little bit slower, yeah. so I'm able to focus on the thought and the word a little bit more. Um, and then you know, maybe someday, twenty years later, I'll go back and try to decipher what I read and realize that I it's can't read it. It's fascinating. All, but, yeah. It's neat because you realize uh, like, wow, I guess you know, we've done, we've done a lot of things and mm-hmm. mine have to be burned and destroyed when I die because uh, you know, it's a journal. So sometimes you want to write things in there that are personal, but you don't right. want anyone else to read them. Yeah. But I have well, bins full of them. I'll sell well, that's, them on eBay. That's a good, that's a good journal. A good journal is one that's not written for anybody else. It's one that you yeah. just have for yourself. It's not meant to be, turned into a blog post or turned into a, a, a no. you know, an emotional social media post. It's just for you. It's, it's, yeah. It's and for- that's kind of a fine line because it's a, a lot of times social media, you know, people just want to share everything. And I, I, yeah. I don't want to do that. I'm not like that. There's always a line with me. I don't want to get into this. It's like, I just want to, I'd rather teach fitness, you know, I yeah. want to teach movement and stuff and mm-hmm. be myself while I'm doing it, but I don't want to get into the nuts and bolts of a lot of things in my life. That's yeah. just for my wife and my family and close friends. Yeah. Like yeah. you asked if, you know, I'm very happy. And I, I am. I have a very good outlook. But, you know, I have moments. I have angst. I, I get upset about things, you know, and mm-hmm. I, I work through it, you know. But I wouldn't want to put that on people who follow me. I might mention it sometimes, but I don't want to dwell on it. Mm. Because there becomes a point where it's more like, come on, give me some attention for this. And I don't want that. I, I don't mm-hmm. like how I am if I'm angry. I know that it's essential, of course, but I don't mm-hmm. want to dwell on it. I want to get moving um, and work my way out of it. Because in the other side of that, it's very, very um, exciting and rewarding when you can get out of it. You know, I, I, I say, you know, losing with my parents gone, that's what hits me a lot. It's subconsciously. I don't even realize it sometimes, but it's that yearning to want to reach out to them and share with them Mm -hmm. just a phone call away or a visit. And it's not there. And a lot of times it's not even in the front of my brain. It's, it's, it's down deeper, but it's still, it springs up in different ways. So Mm -hmm. as long as I'm aware of that, you know, and I can kind of, I can work myself through that. And I know that's, 
it's it's how it has to be you know it'd be mm-hmm. sad if i just never thought about it yeah yeah i think you bring up the i don't know i mean social media there's there's like yes there's a i think there's a benefit to everyone both you and the you know the audience the consumer the viewer whatever you want to call it whatever you want to call them um to to being vulnerable to a certain extent to sharing things but you have to kind of pick and choose what you want to share because if you share certain things then that's what you become known for and you know you'd like to present like hey this is like a you know it, it might make sense or you might want to present like a more comprehensive view of your life um or somehow do it in a way that is you know helpful to everybody but at the same time you you do get known for what you share and you don't want to put out something that becomes your perceived identity so i don't know yeah well you you know you we all do it you know we cultivate our own image that we want to uh reflect onto whoever's watching, whoever's looking at it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, yeah, there is an urge to do that sometimes. But for me, it's like, I want to share, like, I hear a song that I just love. I want to share mm-hmm. it right away. Something like that. I want to share things that are, that excite me. That, yeah, uh, and I get that, that sense that from that your social That can make me media. a better husband, a better teacher, a better father, a uh, better neighbor, I guess. Think, things like that. I've always gravitated towards that. I like mm-hmm. to be in that flow, that state of flow like that. Um, I did do a video uh, where I did talk about my dad. Um, it was not long after he passed. And, and I did say, look, if you want to go, I was sitting on a golf course in Evergreen, Colorado, where I lived. It was, you know, it wasn't open, but I mm-hmm. found this great spot. I was with Addie and I'm like, I really, I walked out there. I'm like, I, I didn't even know if I was going to talk about it or not, you know, because I, I just, I, I had to just, it had to be in the moment if, if it really struck me to talk. And I talked I talked about my dad for about 10 minutes. I talked about a lot of things about what was going on. And a lot of people were shocked because I had never talked about it before. I said, well, I don't want to bring up my personal stuff, especially about my dad. He was going through enough. I didn't want to make mm-hmm. any of that public. Um, I just want to stay away from that, you know, because yeah. people all, you know, any, anyway, I, I like to keep that kind of stuff private. It was tough enough you know, uh, with the six months of going through all that stuff anyway. But I mm-hmm. felt good to talk about in the video. Uh, and anyone can, can listen to that. And, and everyone goes through these things. So, you know, you, you realize that also, that everybody goes through these things. None of us mm-hmm. are alone in this, and it can be very therapeutic that way. Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing it here, honestly. And if you, uh, if you wouldn't mind, I'm going to ask you for that link to that video in case anyone else wants to... Okay. See it in the show notes. Yeah, it's a really um, cool spot. I mean, Evergreen, Colorado, where we're living, is beautiful. You know, the hills. And, so mm-hmm. filming outside there was always very um, lethargic. I think we yeah. just pour things out sometimes. And then yeah. Addie would come and jump on me. Right. Yes. <laughs> um, all right. So just a couple more questions. And then I will, uh-huh. I will set you free on your, on your, uh, on your, uh, your bachelor weekend. So what is... <laughs> oh, it's going to get wild. I might make a salad <laughs> later. Ooh. A big salad and watch Columbo. You know, I'm inviting everyone over. I'm sitting yeah. in straddle position right now. There we go. Good. Yeah, I've got my, <laughs> I'm sitting on a shag rug, but I have so my So you're, uh, my you're not in a chair, are here. you, Dean? I'm not in a chair. I have a little, poof. Okay. I have a little cushion I'm sitting on. It's about okay. six inches. Look at us. Look at so. us. We're so, we should be sitting like in the squat, you know, the garland oh, position yeah. actually the squatty potty position <laughs> yes um i'll keep yeah i got a little bit of work to do before i get there for 60 minutes but um oh yeah never we won't be able to move <laughs> right so what is the what is the most stressful part of your day-to-day life uh stressful part uh mm. oh, trying to get the flow and uh, it doesn't always happen my wife and I, you know, she works from home now. She telecommutes. So uh, we try to find that balance, especially with the Dane. Um, Dane starts pre-K when does he start? in uh, August here in town. So he'll have a couple days a week while he'll be gone for half a day. But trying to 
I, sometimes it gets to me. I want to be able to be very present for Dane and also be able to work on what I need to work on. Mm. Uh, I don't like having to rush things. It, it, you know, if I'm editing a video, rushing that, it, I realize it, it causes me anxiety. I don't like mm. to do that. I like to have some time to just sit down, like right now, to sit down and have this chat with you is so, it's so nice. It's so relaxing. I don't have to worry yeah. about jumping up to do something. And not that I don't want to. The reason is I want to spend the best time I can with my son, you know, to get my stuff done so I can be totally there. Because sometimes, you know, you're with them and, and I'm, oh, I, I got to oh, I got Yeah, it's, it's hard to, to get. Or other business, other things besides the fitness stuff that I work on. Oh, I have to call about that or do this. And mm -hmm. um, I'd like to be 100% present with the boy because he knows when I'm not. Right. He's so perceptive. Dad, you're not, you know, if I answer him and he knows I haven't listened to him. I don't understand what he's talking about. No, dad, you know, he knows right away. The, he's brilliant. They, they have no distractions. So he knows exactly that I'm, right. that I'm humoring him about something. I'm sure you, is Declan talking a lot? He babbles a lot. Um, uh -huh. He hasn't gotten to the point where um, he's babbling a lot, but I don't understand what he's saying. No one does understands he say, what he's saying. He understands <laughs> he what say he dada? says. Oh yeah, he says he says dada. He says mom a lot. Uh -huh. He says more, which also sounds exactly like mom. Um, he says lots of words that start with B. So butterfly, bird, um, baba, which is his grandpa. Um, oh, that's nice. But he says ba for all of them. Um, <laughs> so it's very confusing. Um, but yeah. But you know, you know what they are. Yes. Yes. Uh huh. Yeah, deep down I know what they are, but if I try to analyze them and you know consciously think uh -huh. about what he's saying, I won't know what he's saying. But if I just yeah. react, I'm like, oh yeah, sure. Then uh huh. Yeah. But he knows you react. He knows you're listening. So that's yeah. Yeah, it's the hard consonants. And Jilly was always a little upset because Dane's he said daddy or dad dada before mommy. I said, well, to be fair, D's are d d d. They're they're nice hard consonants to say. Mm. So more than m. M and D. D has more punch to it. Maybe that's why. But. <laughs> well, hey, you're you're one of the you're one of the first you're one of the the few parents for uh, who dad was the first. So congrats on that. Mm -hmm. I know. Uh, well, I think he said dad, dad, but he didn't know what it meant. He just said it. So maybe it was that. But mm. uh, we'll we'll think that he just. And yeah, also, well, Addy and Daddy are very similar. Dog's name is Addy. He mm -hmm. put them together. Daddy and Addy. Daddy. So. That might have helped also. And I would take him for walks and I would just say daddy a lot to him. I was kind of mm, conditioned to say it. And he would say, good. I said, no, it's daddy. Daddy. So, <laughs> Well done. <laughs> um, what do you think is the biggest challenge? This is the big one. My last one. What do you think is the biggest challenge facing men and their well-being right now? Uh, well, there's a lot of Oh, Dean, that's like an essay, isn't it? Hmm. Let me yes, I need a five-paragraph essay with a general oh, theme I those, and three you know, things intro. that you... Yeah, yes. that's right. Yep. Intro, then I have to sit up. There's my knee. I have to sit up for that. Men and their well-being. Um, well, what we talked about earlier, a big one, I think, would be the cell phone addiction. I think that's a big one. It may not seem like much, but how much yeah. time are you spending on your cell phone being distracted? Even at the gym, which is a place of, quote, health and fitness, uh, 90, I walk in there, 90% of the people, they're not like this. I mean, they are hunched over looking at a phone, and they'll do it mm -hmm. for 5, 10 minutes at a time or more. Um, so th that is a big one. If you're doing it at the gym, how much are you doing it everywhere else? Yeah. I would say I that, a, that's a big one. And I need the, a, We need to start printing out our workouts on an index card instead of – because that's why – that's my excuse yes. for being on my phone at the gym is I have it – on my my workouts on my phone so i have to check yeah. it, right but anyways do you put it in notes i used to put um, mine in notes mine is in my i have an app it's, it's through an app called true coach which is what uh -huh. my trainer uses but anyways um i should You're just so hip, write it Dean. out yeah i'm, I'm so <laughs> hip yes yes uh. I bring my I bring my Commodore sixty four computer with me to the gym. I have it written out on there, and my Texas Instruments. Uh, but uh, you know, that, I, I would say the distractions are a big one. I would never preach something that I myself don't have a challenge with. You know, like mm. I say, even the phone will get me. I bring the phone in because I use the music. Um, but 
and I, I keep it in my pocket except to switch songs. I'm very aware of that. But sometimes I whip it out like, oh, I got to film this. Yeah, I'm always filming like, oh, this is a neat one on the ball. Let me put the camera over here and I can make a little reel about it. Then I put it yeah. away. But I think distractions are a big one for health and fitness and guys. But, you know, just be aware of what you are consuming here, 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 everywhere. What are you consuming? What are you putting into your mind, your body and your spirit? Mm. Is it something positive that elevates or is it something that destroys? And what kind of thoughts are you having? The battleground that is the mind. You know, you control what you think about. Are you thinking, uh, sometimes I come home and like there'll be some bad drivers and I get home kind of in a pissy mood. I'm like, stop that. You know, I'll just take some deep mm. breaths, say a little prayer. I'm like, okay. It's like, what's the big deal? It's no big deal. Why are you upset about that? But control what you're thinking about. You have that ability to do that. Uh, but yeah. I would say, you know, keep in that state of flow, no distractions. What are you consuming? Uh, and also read, read an hour or two a day, read. Mm. Like you and I write books and I go, I like to write. Some days I'm like, I can't write. I haven't been reading the last couple of days. Like my mind shuts down. Mm. Then I'll sit down and read for an hour. Then I want to write again. It's weird. It primes your mind to want to mm. you know, write, write about things. Yeah. I think those are all great tips. Yeah. I mean, the, uh, what do you do? For, what is your uh, what would your advice be? My challenge. I've heard so many great answers to this question. Um, I think uh, we had um, Ben Checkets, this this this. Oh, sorry, Nate Checkets, the CEO of um, of Roan, who is apparel is a big men's apparel company that I work with. His answer was shame. And mm -hmm. I, at first, I was like, oh, I don't have shame. And then I thought about it more, and I thought about how much shame I have behind. Oh, I'm not doing enough right now, or I'm not where I want to yeah. be with my business, or I'm. I'm not where I want to be with, you know, being a father or being a husband. And the amount of time I think about that and how much, how much energy and how much guilt and shame goes into, you need to be better. You should be doing this. You should be doing this. That's huge. Yeah. Um, I think the being on the phone is, is something as well. I think um, not being present, but my big answer, honestly, if I were to, if you're asking me this and if this is me interviewing myself would be not taking time to think about things, not taking time to reflect. Mm -hmm. So for you, it's going on those long walks and being able to, you know, think about things and dream. Um, and for me, my kind of answer is just taking time to, to be with your thoughts. So maybe you journal about them. Maybe you're just going for a walk and you leave your phone at home and you just process things. Um, but yeah, I think that, in today's world with all of the distractions and all of the different things competing for your attention, just being with yourself and your thoughts and processing, processing those and coming to your own conclusion about things and recognizing what are your own core beliefs and what are your values? If you really just ask yourself and don't take into account, you know, what you think you should be doing or what mm -hmm. you should be feeling or, what are these other high performing entrepreneurs doing? And I need to be doing what they're doing. And if you just yeah. ask yourself, oh, um, the, I think the delirium that's, that's of that's expectations that we put on ourselves, it, it, you yeah. become delirious and you realize they're all just thoughts. They're like farts in the wind. They just dissolve. They don't mean anything, but <laughs> my son asks why about everything. And it's great. Sometimes it's a little frustrating, but he always asks why. And I always say, that's a good question, Dane. Adults don't ask why very much at all. They just go, you mm. know, whether they're trying to imitate what they saw or do what they think they're supposed to be doing. They don't ask why. And it's a great answer. That's what gets me into trouble. Like, I, oh, what should I be doing? Like, well, you should be right yes. here right now. That's it. That's all you have. In 50 years, you're not going to look back, you know, you just, you're going to look back at the subtle things you wish you would have done more, not these big expectations you put on yourself. Mm. Yeah. Well, I think it's really cool that you, that's what you think right now. I don't, than... again, these, but these are things that I, you know, we all struggle with them. Uh, that's why I say, you know, cut out less social media you can do is better. Be very focused with it. You know, be very focused mm -hmm. what you do because the whole scrolling thing turns your mind and your expert, your, it turns your, your mind to mush. It really does. It just pulls mm -hmm. you in all these different ways. And as you said, you lose your own voice, who you really mm. are, what your purpose is. Um, and to really compose long thoughts, like as a society, we don't really, someone was, we don't read 
poetry much anymore. We don't, a lot of us, we don't read the great works anymore. We don't read Shakespeare. We don't read these things that take a great, that give us a great mental exercise. Remember in the movie Dodgeball, he comes down the stairs, Dwight, White Goodman, Ben Stiller with the encyclopedia. Yeah, but it's, it's, re- fake. Goes, it's the yeah, dictionary. He goes, Sometimes I like to break he's a mental sweat. Yeah, he goes, he's you know, I like to break a mental sweat. <laughs> yeah. And I think about it, he was making it up, but it made sense. You know, I like yeah. to just really get the mind going. And to, you know, the greatest things, innovations happen through a lot of thought, a lot mm-hmm. of, you know, deep thought, composing long thoughts. And in that, you find out more of your true self and your true being. But all the distractions, you'll never find it. You'll just latch on to what you think you're supposed to do, and it drives you away from your purpose. And anyway, you just get go off a cliff somewhere. And then later on, you're older and you're bitter, and you wish you could go back and do it a different way. Yeah, hmm. I, uh, I, I think those are all great points. Well, Sean, I want to uh, thank you for your time, your thoughts, your energy, your sharing your your bachelor weekend uh, with me. And, <laughs> my bachelor um, weekend, yes. my Easter weekend. It's gonna get that's wild. What, uh-huh. <laughs> that's what I'm. That's what I'm calling it, at least. Um, so, okay. how do people uh, follow you? Get in touch with you? Uh, you know, to see what you're doing. Well, the easiest way is go to my YouTube channel at Sean V Fitness. Just click play, and or you know, search for a. You want Pilates, anything you want, you know, click, put it in the search and uh, find it. And uh, you can also go to SeanBeanFitness.com. I just had my website redone a few months ago. It looks very good. I would say start there. Go to the bookstores. Pick up our books. Mm-hmm. Cool. How, how is your new book doing? Um, good. It is, uh, it, is, it is going as expected. Okay. That is, what the, that is what the publishers tell me. So we're good. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, no, it's it's doing well. It's it's good to see the responses. So thanks. Good. For asking. Do you uh, do you ever do signing? I have. I think I've once. Once I have uh-huh. gone into a bookstore and they had my book, and I said, "Oh, here's my book." They're like, "Oh, do you want to sign them?" I'm like, uh, "Sure." Um, yeah. So I've done that once. But uh, I know you okay. do that. I've seen you. Uh, I had never. Yeah, I, I never did it before, and they said, "Do you want to sign them?" Yeah, because I always have. I have a couple books that are in bookstores and sure. Yeah. I never thought about it before. My publishers never really pushed that, but okay. I, I know a lot of authors that are very shy about doing that, but I've gotten very like, Hey, you, I'll just take them to the front. Like, Hey, you have some of my books here. You know, I'll hold them up. They don't even ask if they're really mine. I can just grab <laughs> anything. Okay. Mr. King or Mr. Koontz, you know, sure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 you wrote Lord of the Rings. Great. Sign them all. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I like to go to bookstores to write. Like I'll go to Barnes & Noble, Books Mill, wherever, and I sit in the mm. cafe and I'll take out my old HP laptop and write. Um, I'm working on three books right now, kind of about Dane, different things. And uh, mm. so, but I, I get very inspired, like, hey, they got my books here. You know, and I'll go back and, and see those. It's kind of like you're in a brotherhood. Of, mm-hmm. of authors, of all the authors that are there, sisterhood, or brotherhood, you know, and I, I, I enjoy that. It gives me energy. Yeah. What I do for, if I do like a, I do guest classes a lot, I will bring books with and okay. I find when I, if I do a guest class somewhere, they will buy any book that I bring because they actually just did the class with me and they feel good. So they're like, oh, I want to buy his book. So I've done mm. those before. Yes, um, that makes that makes sense. Use their endorphins to sell books. I love exactly. It. It's the feeling afterwards, and and then they get to know you, and mm-hmm. and and like, oh, well, that's cool. You, because I just love books. I, I I don't do digital things. I I have bookcases full of books. Mm-hmm. I like things that you can hold on to, like DVDs and CDs, and mm-hmm. that aren't just streaming. That you can you can look at and and put on a bookshelf somewhere. Yeah, so, there's. There's definitely something to having a physical, because it's it's more than just like consuming the content. It's having it there, being able to see it, and that reinforcing and, your idea of who you want to be. You know, I yeah. am someone who reads books, and here is a physical representation of that. Uh huh. And I smell that. books. I always smell mm-hmm. a book. First thing I do, and my son does that now too. Is like, let's smell it, Daddy. It's like okay, <laughs> like oh, because they all have a different like. It smells like a textbook. You know, my my Pilates for athletes books has a great smell to it. It smells like an old textbook that I had, uh, and I, 
I just, I really enjoyed, like I went to, was it books, one of the books of millions around here and I saw your book there, the mm. new yoga for athletes. And I'm like, let me take a look at that. Let me know if you want me to, I, I posted about it once when it first came out. I did a post oh, yeah. with it. And, Thank and, you. Uh, and uh, like, that's cool. And I'll, it's so funny because some of the people in bookstores could give two craps that you write books. Like you work in a bookstore. Um, like these are my books. And like, oh, that's my buddy Dean. And oh, there's Cassandra. And there's, uh, you know, all these people that I've collaborated with have books right, right there. I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> Just sign it. I'm like, oh, do you want me to put it back? Okay. And then they walk off. <laughs> hey, these are yeah. my books here. Oh, good for you. And they just keep walking. So I, I always thought that was kind of funny. Yeah. Uh, but I think some people get scared. Like, he's going to make me do Pilates. I don't want to do Pilates. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, cool. Well, Sean, thanks again for um, for joining me, for sharing all this stuff with me. Um, it was an awesome conversation. Um, I'm sure we'll talk again soon. Um, I don't know what else to say. Anything else you want to add? Oh, I knew it would be. You and I have, well, we've done a couple collaboration videos together. We did another one when I was in Colorado. Remember, we did, that was a long one. That was awesome. And uh, we've had long conversations. But as I say, there's only a handful of us out there that are kind of crazy enough to do this, this kind of, um, this fitness job that we do, where we yeah. put our names behind it and have videos and go out to a lot of different kinds of media. So I, I so enjoy talking with you and, and the other, I, I have a podcast too, and I had you on my podcast. Mm -hmm. I'd yep. love to find out where people start. It's always kind of a, we're always just constantly stumbling into things. Like yeah. we know what we love, what we like to do, and we're trying to share it across many different platforms and that evolves over time. So mm -hmm. I, I've, I've enjoyed, uh, I got to talk to, Le you know, Leslie Fightmaster, you yes, know Leslie, right? She had she had passed away a few months mm -hmm. ago, and her and I yeah. had done some stuff together. Just a real sweetheart, and she was on my podcast, and I so enjoyed having that conversation with her. I need to share that because I know people really miss her a lot. She was such mm -hmm. a such a lovely lady, and um, I'm so thankful to have conversations like that with her and with you and other people about how we how we do this, how we go about day to day operations of being some kind of online fitness person. Yeah, it's a, uh, there's a lot to unpack with it. So, well, um, thanks for the closing notes, guys. Uh, I encourage you to go learn more about Sean. Uh, if you are looking for more yoga workouts, you're looking for uh, Pilates workouts, he's got an amazing YouTube channel. Um, he has a very fun teaching style. You'll see it when you go check it out. Um, but, uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode of the better man podcast. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, please leave a review, click the review button. That's all. It's just like, you don't even have to write anything. Just click it and it's done. Um, make sure you follow, subscribe, and, uh, I'll look forward to seeing you, uh, or hearing from you or speaking with you, whatever that is on the next episode. If you like that episode, check out this other one right here. I think you're really going to enjoy it. If you haven't subscribed, click this subscribe button over here, and you can listen to the full episodes on any major podcasting platform. Full details below in the description.